Hello, and welcome to another training video with the 15th MEU Realism Unit. In this video, we're going to be covering Op4 Vehicle Familiarization. Lately, I've been noticing that my identification of enemy vehicles has been lacking, so I decided to make a study guide to help myself and help everyone else uh, that has problems identifying all the new enemy vehicles that we're dealing with in RHS. To begin our study guide, we're going to go through some of the op for soft vehicles first, that is vehicles with very little armor that can be uh, taken out by most small arms available to the infantry. First on the list is the UAZ-3151. Essentially, this is a Soviet version of the Jeep. The UAZ-3151 is a very light off-road vehicle, and essentially the way to remember this vehicle is to remember that a UAZ is like an SUV. It's a car. It's a very lightly armored car. It's a Jeep. So the UAZ is the Russian Jeep. Next on our list is the GAZ-66, or the Gaz, the Gorky Goblin. The GAZ-66 is made by Gorky Automobile Plant. The Russians nicknamed this vehicle Shishiga, or Swamp Goblin, hence the name Gorky Goblin. Essentially, this is a Soviet Ford. Ford in the early 1930s actually helped the Soviets to set up their production line to build trucks like this. You can identify this truck by the 4x4 cargo truck design, as well as the snub nose of the truck that gives it a goblin-like appearance. The workhorse of the Russian army is the Ural 4320, or the Soviet U-Haul. The Ural 4320 was made in the Ural Mountains, so you can remember it as a mountain of a truck compared to everything else that the Russians have available currently. In Russia, Ural 4320s are used from, for everything from cargo hauling to fire trucks. It can be used as the base of the BM-21 that we'll see next. The Ural is also big enough to even hold a AA emplacement, making it a mobile anti-air platform. You can distinguish this truck by its large 6x6 design, the orange roof-mounted lights, as well as the general U-Haul-like appearance. Now, this isn't really another vehicle, this is still the Ural truck, but the BM-21 is a rocket launcher that is attached to the back of the Ural to create a highly mobile artillery platform. Think of it as a bunch of missiles on a Ural, BM-21, bunch of missiles. Next on the list is a more modern vehicle, the Gaz Tiger. Now it's made by the same company that made the Gaz 66. However, this is a much more heavily armored uh, troop transport truck. Essentially, this is Russia's MRAP. Now we're going to move into what is more of my problem area, so I'm going to hit it a little bit harder. It's Op4 Armored Fighting Vehicles. Now, the way to go about remembering these is to remember motorized versus mechanized. Motorized is a, like a car. It has wheels. It's something you could expect on the highway. Like a motor vehicle, this is wheeled vehicles. Mechanized, I think of as transformers. Uh, you have a lot of gears and tracks and that kind of thing, and that's how I remember mechanized. Mechanized have tracks. So motorized have wheels, mechanized have tracks. BTR, T stands for tires. So the first BTR we're going to see here is the BTR-40, or as it's referred to in RHS, the BRDM-2. Now this is a very early model of the BTR, and you can kind of tell from the design when you compare this to the BTR-60, that it is just a mini BTR. It's a four-wheel design, whereas the BTR will be an eight-wheel design, uh, but again, it is a BTR, T for tires. Now the BTR-60 is going to be more of the mainstay of BTRs, and as you can see, it really does look like the BRDM, just an eight-wheel version instead of a four-wheel version. Now, some of the major identifying features that you're going to be able to pick out real quick in the BTR series is going to be this pipe system on the back and this shield on the back, and these are going to change from model to model. So the BTR-60 has got a cage-like pipe design, and it's got a teardrop shield. Now, on the BTR-70, we can see the changes here in both the pipe system and the shield, and these are going to change again when we move on to the BTR-80. 
In the BTR80, you can see that this pipe system gets a lot larger and the pear shape becomes a lot more square and set down towards the bottom. But like you can see through these iterations of the BTR, all the BTRs have tires. So in RHS, BTRs have tires. Now BMPs, I would like to think of them as badass mech patrols. The M in BMP is for mech, mechanized. BMPs have tracks. BTRs have tires. BMPs have tracks. The BMP is more heavily armored and more mobile. It's a little bit faster too than the BTR. The BMP is a lot more dangerous than the BTR. Now I find that the BMPs are a little bit tougher to distinguish, but uh, there are a few main features still to look at. Primarily the main gun. The BMP1 is gonna look like this, whereas the BMP2 is gonna look like this. This is your first and biggest clue as to which iteration it'll be. There's also the BMP3, which is a little bit more easily distinguished by its larger main gun, as well as its more square-like shape, especially on the back end. The thing to remember about BMPs is that a BMP is primarily a fighting vehicle, whereas the BTR is primarily a transport vehicle. But again, BTRs have tires and BMPs are mechs. Now tanks are very easily distinguishable from a BTR or a BMP. In RHS, the tanks have three primary iterations, the T-72, the T-80, and the T-90. The T-72 has very few identifying features versus the T-90. The primary one is this circular light here on the front. On the T-72, it's more of a circular light, whereas on the T-90, it's a square light. But otherwise, your primary identification is going to be this small object on the back, this small cylinder on the back. If you see this, you know it's either a T-72 or T-90. These two will always have this small object on the back, so it makes it for a very easy profile even from a distance. T-80s are always the easiest to identify for me because they always have a more blocky chassis and a more rounded turret. The turret is still gonna have that circular lamp and not the square lamp of the T90, but its main identifying feature is going to be the much larger cylinder on the back. Now the ZSU is pretty easy to identify. It's an anti-air vehicle. The ZSU is very easily profiled by the radar dish on top, as well as the many, many barrels sticking out of the front of it, as well as its longer shape. Now this vehicle is very easy to identify in the field. It has a long flat profile and it actually does carry a Scud missile in it. I hope this video helped you as much as it helped me when I was creating it. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave it a like just cause that makes me feel good and I appreciate it guys. Uh, stay tuned for more training videos soon.